Welcome back everyone. We're continuing to work on our 2019 RAM. Last episode we got all the framework, all the metal work done. So now we're going to continue with getting the pillars, the cab corner and the A pillar, getting the filler work on there, getting that into primer and getting everything ready for paint. But first to drive this off, we got to take all this stuff back apart because I have the expansion tank off of there and I don't want the antifreeze to leak. So I gotta take all this stuff off to get that stuff back on and then we'll pull it off the frame and start with the filler work. Alright guys, so we got our expansion tank back on there for the radiator, we got the water bottle on there, we got the wire harness back on there, so we're ready to take the car off the frame, put it on the other side of the shop so we can start doing the filler work and getting it ready for paint. Alright guys, got the truck off the frame. The next part is we gotta put filler on here, on here. We got the gap is a little bit big, so we gotta uh, work that with the filler. We're actually gonna use Duraglass on this one, just because I want it to be nice, solid, waterproof uh, base on it. And then I'll finish it with the putty. So we're gonna keep the door on there so we can get that gap right. And the same thing on this filler. This one's really good, a um, little bit lower. But basically, we're keeping the doors so we can get our, all of our gaps and everything so it's perfect. So we're going to start with the filler work. We're going to start prepping it, start applying the filler, the Duraglass, and then we'll start shaping it and working from there. And the other thing, I know that uh, you can see from the factory, I thought this was dirty, but that's just not painted from the factory. They got paint up to here, and then the rest is just whatever got on there. All right, this is my first time ever using Duraglass, but man, this thing, this stuff is thick. I'm trying to mix it up. It's like Play-Doh. This stuff is actually pretty hard. This is one of the first layers that I had left over. And I mean, if it gets a really hard impact, I mean, and I'm guessing this is not dry 100%. All right, guys, so after a lot of time, not the best at the filler work, but I am done with the Duraglass. I got my shape. I got my nice gap there. So now it's time to go ahead and use our lightweight filler that we can use to finish this and fill like all the little pinholes and everything else like that and give it its final shape that we can prime then. So let's go ahead and mix some of that up. guys we're putting the final putty glaze on here all right guys so we got most of the filler work done 
where I'm pretty happy with the I got the main shape in there and then I got like these areas where I had to pull some of this out where it's really hard to get in there with the filler so what we are gonna do is use some of this feather fill which is a epoxy high build uh, primer surfacer so we're gonna go ahead and coat it with this give it a nice build up especially in these areas like we're inside the jam here that way I can go ahead and sand those and it'll be finally ready for paint where I'm happy with it and we can um, move on to the A pillar and then we can get that stuff in primer and it'll be ready for paint so let's, I'm gonna go ahead and mix some of that feather fill where it's uh, basically I figured it out according to the directions it's uh, 8 ounces to a quarter of this tube so we're gonna go ahead and mix that up I already have everything taped up everything's cleaned off so I'm gonna mix some of that feather fill up spray it and we'll come back to it and see what it looks like okay so we got our feather fill on the co cab corner the lines we're still gonna a little bit wavy but uh, this stuff is basically like liquid bondo um, so we'll be able to still correct that line to make it perfect but otherwise we got everything in there a couple of high spots that I missed that I'm hopefully I can sand them out if not I'll have to knock those high spots down and then reapply this stuff so we'll let it dry and then we can start sanding up. Right, guys so our feather fill is all nice and dry since we're getting really close to getting that shape, I want it to be perfect. I'm going to use some guide coat on here. And this will show me exactly where everything is. And even with just applying the guide coat, I can see some low spots there. So I'm going to... I got a uh, 400 grit on here, just on a paint stick. So we're just gonna keep going over it until everything is nice and even. All right guys, so I finally got this where I'm happy with it, where I can go ahead and put that final coat of the 2K primer on there. I got the gap nice and even. I got my shape because there is a body line here. There's another body line that goes through here, another one there. There's a ton of body lines running in this corner. I'd say of just straight work, took probably got eight hours in this. Um, it, it basically prolonged about two days with me putting it on there, letting it dry, sanding. But like actual work is about eight hours on this, um, especially getting all this nice in there too because there's a lot of low and high spots and it's really hard to get into here but I got it we got this pillar fixed up this one was a lot easier just because there's not so many body lines and it's smaller area but I got this so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these doors that way I can prep everything bag the car and I can put a nice layer of primer on there to final block to get it that much closer to paint. Also, I got these flares already. Um, got them sanded down as, I, as best as I could with 180. These were also not the easiest to sand, especially doing all these little pockets by hand. Uh, these took about an hour a piece of just straight sanding. So I got four of them, that's four hours, just to sand them, just to prime them to have to sand them again. So we're gonna get these ready, the truck ready, We'll get all this stuff in primer so it's dry and then we can do the final block. Finally got everything where we wanted it. I got the whole car taped up. We got our cab corner prepped. We got our A pillar prepped also. We're ready to spray some primer on here. So we're gonna go ahead and prime this. We're gonna prime 
all the flares because we were going to paint these body colors and we want them smooth. So I got them sanded out as best as I could. The rest is going to get blocked out with the primer. So let's go ahead and mix up some primer and start spraying. Alright, so we're going to be using a 2K primer. It's a DTM primer, direct to metal. So even a little pieces of metal that we have exposed, this primer is good to stick to there. So if it mixes four to one, so we're going to go ahead and mix that. I also like to reduce my primer a little bit just so that it flows out and there's less texture. That way it's a lot easier to block it out and sand it. We got our primer gun. We got a 1.8 millimeter size tip in there. All right, we're going to start with the flares and then work our way back to the truck. All right guys, so more sanding. We're going to start off with the 400 grit just to get most of that whatever texture is in there to get it nice and flat and then we'll finish it off with some 600. As you can see, there's pretty much no texture, so we'll be able to get all this stuff off by hand. And then these areas we'll go over with a block so they're nice and straight. Alright guys, and we're just going to get this done. Probably not going to even put it on a time lapse because it's so hot down here in Florida that our camera is constantly overheat. So we're just going to get this done and then we'll come back once we're done with this. Alright guys, we're almost done sanding. We got the whole truck prepped. We got this blended also here where we're going to do our blend because we don't want to paint the whole um, jam area primarily because there's a VIN sticker here and even if we tape this up there's going to be a big border we don't want to mess with that so what we're going to do is we're going to blend it here and blend the clear coat and then we're going to paint it all the way up and around to here and blend it here also and there'll be a blend somewhere around here. That way we don't touch this B pillar because of the VIN sticker. Also, I finally got these flares all sanded out because they were textured and that's the only thing that was available for this truck. But we got all the primer sanded out. It took me pretty much a whole day just to get four flares. But I wanted them perfect so I had to take my time, especially getting in all these grooves right here. So that way it's 100% once we paint it and we don't have to worry about anything. So right now, what we're going to do is get the truck outside. We're going to give it a nice wash so that we, we don't have any dirt. When we paint it, everything's nice and clean. So we're going to wash that, wash the flares, and then we got to sand the bed. So the skin that we replaced, because we're going to be painting the door jams, the, skin, the bed, and the flares right now. So we've got to get all that stuff ready, clean this area where we've been sanding, and then we can start getting everything ready taped up for painting.
Alright guys, so we're ready to paint finally. We got everything all taped up. We got the door openings taped up. We got this taped up and you might think, why is this shiny here? Well, because I'm going to be actually spraying clear coat just until the, the paint is going to get blended here and blended here. And this is just going to be clear coat and also clear coat here. And then I'm going to use the blend spray to uh, blend everything. But I don't want the tape lines anywhere close because that blend spray actually will melt even the original factory clear coat. So we're going to blend, do the blend spray here. Wherever it lands, it'll be fine. And then that way we don't have any tape lines. We did that here, and we also did that there. So that's why we have that taped up that way. We got all the flares, which took a really long time to prep, but it's going to be well worth it, just because these are going to give it that nice look that we're going for. We got it all taped up also. I'm going to be going into here, just because there's a nice piece of metal that was sticking up higher than this one, so that's going to give me a nice area to spray and you won't be able to see any tape lines on there. We're going to wax and grease remove everything, we'll get the doors shut, get our fan going, and we'll start spraying. Alright guys, so we got two different wax and grease removers. We got your standard one that we're going to be using for the truck and the bedside, which is metal. And then we got this anti-static that we're going to be using on the flares and the plastic gas cap. Because this, the plastics, when you use the regular one on there, it builds static and it attracts any dust or anything that's flying around in the air. So we're going to use two different ones for different types of material. Alright guys, so we're going to be painting. The paint coat is PAU Granite Crystal. Alright, so this paint normally mixes two to one. It's pretty thick, so I over reduce it just a tiny bit all the time. And it is 100 degrees in the shop, so we're going to be using everything so it's slow. Like the reducer, the hardener, everything's going to be slow. So I got two layers of base coat on there. This is a high metallic, so there's a lot of metallics flying around. So I'm gonna go over the blend areas with a tack cloth to pick up any flakes or anything like that that landed. That way it doesn't show up because when they land dry like that, they tend to stick up and they sparkle and change the color. So we're gonna pick all those up. All right guys, so now we're ready for the clear coat. We're using a Two to one high solids clear. This mix is two to one. On top of that, we're going to reduce it. And then we also have some of this uh, blend solvent. This will, this will uh, basically dissolve the blends, but this will be at the very end. Once I'm done with my clear coat, where those blend areas is, I'll just spray some of this. Guys, we're back the next morning. Had a late night yesterday, but we did get this truck painted. So let's check out how everything turned out. The flares turned out, I mean, they're all slicked out. And the whole paint job, again, turned out there's no dirt at all. I don't know if it was the vents. We switched the clear to a four to one or a two to one instead of four to one. 
Haven't really figured out what it was, but I'm not going to change anything because these paint jobs are coming out clean in a shop. So I'm really happy with it. But let's keep take, take a look at this. My blend here turned out good with the, even the clear and everything. Um, everything turned out good. The what? All the body work here turned out good. Um, I have all the all the body lines here. Everything turned out good. The jam, because this was all mangled from us pulling it and everything, so we got that perfect. Um, just over happy overall with this. So we're gonna untape all this stuff, take it outside so it can dry in the sun, and we'll take a look at what it looks like out in the sun. And we're gonna start prepping the rest of the parts. That way, the paint job can be 100%. And we can start reassembly. <laughs> Alright guys, so we got everything outside. The sun pretty soon is gonna come over and it's gonna be shining on all this stuff. That way it can all get, get nice and dry and baked with the sun. But man, out here, it looks just as good as it did in the shop. Everything turned out really good. I'm really happy with it. I guess you can get a good professional paint job in a shop. All right guys, so we got all of our, the rest of our parts that we need to get painted for the ram. We got them prepped and there's quite a few parts and we had doors that needed to be painted inside and out and versus having to paint the inside, tape everything off and then repeat the process all over again to do the outside. We actually built ourselves a stand, so let's check it out. It's a little redneck engineer, but I think it's gonna work. So we just took a ladder, some two by fours, put them across and this way I'll be able to get everything painted on the inside also the outside, it's got plenty of distance from the ground for us to get a nice clean paint job. So I think this stand will work out pretty good. We've got two doors and two fenders. Almost half a car on there. The only thing that's missing is a little motor to just have the whole thing rotate and I can stand in one spot and just hold the gun. Alright guys, so we had to buy some more paint. So. What the plan is, is I know sometimes even just the tiniest bit difference, like a couple drops more, you know, just to be on the safe side, the new paint that we got, that's what I'm going to do first. And then the last coat, I'm going to do with what we had left over, which I should have enough to do everything the last coat with, just so it's 100%. I also got a new respirator, because the other one, I was starting to be able to sm slightly smell some of the fumes. So it's time to get a new one. Can be too safe with this stuff. Alright guys, we're back the next day, but now we have all of our parts painted for this ram. Our stand turned out, it worked out great. Um, we were able to completely paint the doors from the outside, inside. I had access everywhere, able to paint everything all at once without any tape lines, so that way it's exactly like OEM. Got our brand new fender that we had, everything turned out real good. We, um, again, it turned out very clean. The texture is just right, exactly what we need for an OEM look. Very happy with it, how it turned out. And this fender, I painted it, it had just a tiny bit amount of damage here from that headlight that got cracked. It got pushed over by the radiator support and there was a couple of chips here. And I didn't want them to start spreading by just touching it up. So I feather edged these uh, chips and then repainted it and blended the color 
and then re-cleared the whole fender. Uh, we also got these filler pieces that we needed to do. This one was the brand new one. This one had a little bit of damage. We repaired that and repainted both of them. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this episode. We got all of our parts painted. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next episode. We are going to be starting to reassemble this truck to get it closer to being done. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Turn on your post notifications. That way you don't miss the next part. And also check out our previous videos if you're new. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on the next episode.